Rapamycin is a drug that has gained a lot of attention in recent years, especially in the field of longevity. Originally discovered in the 1970s, rapamycin is well known for its ability to suppress the immune system, which is why it's often used to prevent organ rejection in transplant patients. However, rapamycin does much more than just suppress the immune system. It's also effective in treating certain types of cancer and other serious conditions. This is because rapamycin inhibits a crucial pathway in our bodies known as mTOR. The mTOR pathway is involved in cell growth, protein synthesis, and metabolism. By inhibiting mTOR, rapamycin can help slow down or stop the growth of cancer cells. Because of its effects on mTOR pathway, some researchers and enthusiasts have started exploring rapamycin as a potential longevity drug. The idea is that by slowing down cell growth and metabolism, rapamycin might help extend lifespan and prevent age-related diseases. But here's where it gets tricky. While rapamycin might offer benefits for people with certain health conditions, its use in otherwise healthy individuals for longevity purposes could come with some serious risks especially when it comes to muscle health and aging. To understand the potential dangers of rapamycin, it's important to first grasp what fast switch motor units and muscle fibers are. Motor units are essentially the connection between your nervous system and your muscles. Each motor unit consists of a nerve cell neuron and the muscle fibers it controls. When your brain sends a signal to a muscle, it's actually sending it to these motor units, telling specific muscle fibers to contract and produce movement. That's how your muscles work. There are two main types of muscle fibers, slow twitch type one, fast twitch type two. Slow twitch fibers are endurance oriented, meaning they're great for activities like walking or long distance running. They're more resistant to fatigue, but don't generate as much power. Fast twitch muscle fibers, on the other hand, are your body's powerhouses. These fibers are activated by high threshold motor units, meaning they kick in when you need to perform quick, explosive movements like sprinting, lifting heavy objects, or jumping. Fast twitch fibers generate a lot of force, but tire out quickly. As we age, we naturally begin to lose motor units, particularly the ones controlling the fast twitch fibers. This loss is a big contributor to the decline in muscle mass, power, and strength that many people experience with aging. This natural decline is a key part of the aging process, affecting not just your muscle health, but overall mobility and quality of life. Fast twitch muscle fibers are crucial for maintaining muscle health and mobility as you age. These fibers provide the strength and power needed for activities like lifting, running, and even getting up from a chair. As these fibers are primarily activated by high threshold motor units, they are vital for any quick or forceful movement. As I mentioned earlier, starting in your 30s, you begin to lose motor units, especially those connected to the fast twitch muscle fibers. By the time you reach 75, you may have lost 50% of these motor units. And in later years, you only have about 10% left. This loss leads to a decrease in the number of fast twitch fibers, which directly impacts muscle power, strength, and function. When fast twitch fibers diminish, your overall muscle mass starts to shrink, a condition known as sarcopenia. Sarcopenia is not just about losing muscle mass. It's about losing muscle quality. And believe it or not, Everyone gets a percentage of sarcopenia as they age. Everyone. Everyone loses muscle power, muscle strength, and mass. Everyone. With fewer fast switch muscle fibers, your muscles become weaker and less able to perform quick, powerful movements they used to. This decline in muscle strength and mobility does not just affect our ability to exercise or lift heavy objects. It has a broader implications for your health. Reduced muscle strength increases the risk of falls, which can lead to fractures and otherwise serious injuries. Also, poor muscle health is linked to a range of age-related diseases, such as diabetes and cardiovascular disease. This is because muscle plays a major role in regulating metabolism, blood sugar level, and overall energy expenditure. Now, let's discuss how rapamycin can seriously affect these fibers and the motor units that control them. Rapamycin works by inhibiting a pathway known as mTOR. The mTOR pathway is crucial for cell growth, protein synthesis, and muscle maintenance, especially the fast-switch fibers. These fibers rely heavily on mTOR to maintain their size, strength, and function. When you take rapamycin, it inhibits mTOR activity. While this can be beneficial in slowing down the growth of cancer cells or reducing the risk of certain diseases, 
It also has a serious downside, particularly in healthy individuals. By inhibiting mTOR, rapamycin can reduce the ability of fast twitch fibers to grow and repair themselves. Over time, this can lead to the atrophy, the shrinkage of these fibers, weakening your muscles and reducing your overall physical strength and power. In a healthy person, especially someone using rapamycin for longevity purposes, this inhibition of mTOR can have serious consequences. Since fast switch fibers are crucial for maintaining muscle strength, power, and mobility, their deterioration accelerates the aging process. You might experience fast, faster muscle loss, reduced physical performance, and an increased risk of falls and injuries. Even more concerning is how long rapamycin stays active in your body. A single dose of rapamycin can suppress mTOR activity for about a week. This means that even if you're taking it once a week, mTOR is being consistently inhibited, which can gradually lead to a significant decline in muscle health over time. While rapamycin is celebrated for its potential longevity effects, particularly in animal studies, it's important to consider the long-term risks it poses, especially for otherwise healthy individuals. When mTOR is chronically inhibited, as it might with regular rapamycin use, the result can be gradual deterioration of these fibers. This deterioration isn't just about losing muscle mass, it's about losing muscle function, power, strength, and quality. The loss of fast switch fibers can accelerate the aging process in several ways. Reduced muscle strength and mobility. As fast switch fibers atrophy, you may find yourself weaker and less able to perform quick and powerful movements. This decline in physical capability can limit your daily activities, reducing your quality of life. Weakened muscle make it harder to maintain balance and coordination increasing the risk of falls. You don't believe it? You better check out the statistics of how many people over 65 fall. And actually a lot of them die after this fall. And if they don't die, they are ruined for life. Look it up. Muscle health is closely linked to overall metabolic health. As muscle quality declines, the risk of developing conditions like type 2 diabetes and cardiovascular disease increases. Muscle plays a crucial role in glucose metabolism and maintaining healthy weight. So a day decline can set off a cascade of health issues. The next thing it could do, it accelerates physical aging. The combination of reduced muscle mass, power, strength, and increased risk of disease can make you feel much, much older. This is the opposite of what most people are seeking for longevity, with rapamycin and hoping to achieve. I mean, don't get me wrong. Rapamycin does offer benefits for people with specific medical conditions. Its use in healthy individuals for longevity purposes comes with serious risks. Look, ladies and gentlemen, the inhibition of mTOR and the resulting loss of fast rich muscle fibers can accelerate aging instead of slowing it down. In closing, rapamycin is a powerful drug with promising potential, especially in the treatment of certain diseases like cancer and in preventing organ rejection after transplants. This is well known. However, when it comes to using rapamycin for longevity and otherwise healthy individuals, the risks cannot be overlooked. The inhibition of mTOR by rapamycin might slow down some aging processes, but it comes with some serious downsides by impairing the fast switch muscle fibers and its motor units. These fibers are very important for maintaining power, strength, mobility, and overall physical health as we age. The loss of fast switch muscle fibers can accelerate the aging process by leading to muscle shrinkage reduced mobility, increased risk of falls, and higher likelihood of developing age-related diseases. Given that a single dose of rapamycin can suppress mTOR for about a week, regular use can result in chronic inhibition of this pathway, leading to long-term deterioration of muscle health, especially when weighted against the risk of accelerating physical aging. If you're considering taking rapamycin for longevity purposes, it's crucial to consult with a healthcare professional and carefully weigh the potential benefits and risks. For healthy individuals, the dangers of accelerated aging and muscle deterioration may far outweigh any potential longevity benefits. All I'm saying is this. In our 30s, we start losing muscle power, then muscle strength, then muscle mass. We lose muscle power, which is called dynopenia. But how do we lose this muscle power? We lose muscle power because we lose the fast motor units that control the fast switch muscle fibers. The objective is to slow down the loss of fast motor units, not accelerate their losses in any way. 
Because if you accelerate their losses, you age quicker. By age 75, we lose 50%. The objective is to lose less than 50%. You will live healthier. You will move better. You will, you will get less age-related diseases. Rapamycin is doing the opposite. This needs to be addressed by the scientists studying rapamycin. They need to address what rapamycin can do to fast twitch motor units and muscle fibers. This is serious. There is no dispute in this. I challenge any scientist to dispute what I just said in here. Prove it wrong. You can't. You can't. Anyway, I won't take it. I'll never take it. I train. I train and I eat to slow down the loss of motor units. That's why you see me running, jumping, moving like someone much younger than me. I live it. I don't take drugs. I don't take any drugs. I train to do this. Have a great day. Be careful, ladies and gentlemen. Don't believe everything you hear. Have a great day.